Greetings fellow time travelers and everyone still stuck on Earth. This is another LinuxCollections.com how-to video for your education, information, and entertainment. Let's get rolling. Today we're going to do a installation walkthrough of the Debian 8.7.1 AMD64 install on an Intel iCore system. And we will start by doing the graphical install. Initially it asks you for the language and we will be selecting English. The location is United States and then the keyboard will be the American English keyboard. So after those initialization steps it will detect and mount the CD-ROM, load the installation components and go to detect the network hardware. In our case on this system there's a Realtek card and that's what that little RTL is but this it's asking for missing firmware. Ideally would put this in but in in our case here we're just simply going to say no and continue on with the install. It will then configure and do the link it will try its IPv6 auto configuration and then finally it will use the DHCP which our network here does have to get the IP address and get going. At that point it will ask you for the host name. It will default to Debian. In, in our case we're going to make it Debian 871 just to remind us which version of Debian we're installing today. And then it asks for the domain name. Now if you were building a web server this would actually be the actual web domain name. Uh, as they indicate here. In our case, your best bet is if this is going to be shared on a Windows network would be to use the workgroup domain which is uh, typically available on all Windows systems and allows you then to interact in the same workgroup. Then it asks for the root password and as always this is the system administrator. The user is simply root and that's the default built-in account and in doing the password you should do a strong password with letters, numbers, and punctuation. However in our case this is just a test system and we're going to do something simple and just use the five characters of Linux and uh, easy for us to remember. Again you would want to use something stronger on your actual system. Finally it will ask you then for the user account. Here you would list all your users. In our case we're just going to make a simple user called user. Again easy to remember. Uh, this will be the same account name. The user is the name and the account name. Finally, just to keep it consistent, we will use the same name as the password. So the password is simply user. And then it will go and set up your clock. It asks for the time zone. In our case, we're on the Pacific time zone. So we'll select that and move forward. At the partition step, it asks you how you want to set up your hard drive. And if you're not familiar with this or what's involved, always a good idea to use the default, the entire disk. It will make the partitions for you and the swap and all that good stuff stuff. This is typically an advanced concept in terms of how you would set things up. Lots of things to read on that. Different people have different ideas, but if you're just setting up a Debian system to use, no, no harm in using the entire disk. You would then select the actual disk in case you had multiple disks here. Here there's just one on the system. Then it asks for where do you want your files if you want a separate home partition or a home var and temp partitions. In our case, again, recommended as, as it says here. Uh, to just put all the files in one partition. So we will do that and it asks you finally uh, or it shows you what it's going to do and we will then go ahead and finish it and write the changes to disk. It again queries if you want to do that and we will say yes and then it, away it will go and it'll format those disks, uh, disk partitions. At that point the installation can begin. Basically this is copying all the files off of the disk and putting it onto your hard drive. As it moves along it will scan the CD-ROM and you have the option of reading in all of your uh, Debian DVDs in this case so that it will be able to know where all the software is. The way you do this is it simply scans it for you. Here it'll scan the binary one and we'll say yes we want to scan again. It will scan that and here's binary two and we'll scan that and and then we go all the way through to the 13th DVD on the set. 
Finally, it will finish things up and ask if you want to be part of the popularity contest. And what this is, is it's the Debian team uh, keeps track of the packages that are used, partially to make sure what's on the first DVD is the most popular packages. In our case, we're not going to be part of that. and We'll just say no. At this point, you have the option of selecting your desktop environment, whether it be GNOME or XFCE, KDE, Cinnamon, mate or lxde i personally like the kde environment so i'm going to select that you also have options to install the web server portions or an ssh server what is default is the debian desktop environment the print server and the standard system utilities after you make your selections here everything is ready for the installation and you can continue and then as you can see it will start the installation of all of the required software to install the Debian system. And this goes on for quite a while. We'll zoom through this after all the files are on your hard drive and you are ready to go. It's going to ask you about your Grub bootloader or the Grand Unified Bootloader. Here in this case we're going to use, we have one hard drive. This is going to be the only hard drive. Then we're going to put this on the master boot record. So it asks if you wish to do that. We say yes and it asks if we want to select the device. In this case, we'll select the drive that we have in the system, of course, and continue on. It will then do the installation. It will finalize the installation, unmount and eject the CD-ROM, and boom, we have the installation complete. At this point, we can take out the disk and basically continue. It will start a reboot process or shut down a reboot process and we will see the grub menu. This is the first thing you'll see when you're booting Debian system that's installed in this manner and the default is, is set and we just will select that. Then we'll see the logon manager where we can actually log on and of course we, we only set up one user so we will do the user with the password user. It will then go into the KDE environment. There's an opening screen that shows the different configuration and internet and pieces of the KDE environment that load and once that loads up we'll have a desktop and here you can see the KDE menu and this system is ready to go. So that wraps up this installation walkthrough of Debian 8.7.1. Thanks for joining us on this journey. This is LinuxCollections.com signing off.